So, in this question, we are given information about two random variables. We know their means, mu's, and their standard deviation, sigmas, for x and y. So, the expected value on mu x is 10, expected value of y on mu y is negative 1, and the variances are just the squares of the given standard deviations. First question is further assumes that x and y are independent. That means that the covariance between x and y is zero. In the second part, that will take a different value and we have a negative covariance. So we should calculate the mean standard deviation of a new random variable v, which is just the sum of x and y. Now, more generically, a combination of two random variables has two weights, a and b, to the x and y's. And if we want to calculate the expected value of v, we have to weight the expected values. If we want to calculate the variance of v, we will use this formula, a squared variance of x plus b squared variance of y plus 2ab covariance of x and y. So these will be the formulas we will be using to solve this question. So. In our definition of v, we, we can think of these weights a and b as being 1. All right, it's a very simple case. So let's tackle question 311. That's the situation where x and y are independent. Now the expected value of v is 1 times 10 plus 1 times negative 1. That's 9. The variance is going to be 1 squared times the variance of x. That's 3 squared plus 1 squared times the variance of y. That's 4 squared plus 2 times 1 times 1 times 0, and that is because we assumed independence. So the result of this is going to be 9 plus 16 equals 25. Right? So the variance of v is 25. What about the second part? The expected value will be exactly the same, nothing changes, but the variance calculation will change. The, the beginning is the same, so it's going to be 9 plus 16, but now the covariance bit is isn't going to disappear. So we have plus 2 times 1 times 1, the a and b coefficients, times negative 8, which is the given covariance between x and y. So if we now calculate this, we get, of course, a variance for v of 9. Now we're we are actually being asked to give the standard deviation, so in 311 that is going to be the square root of 25, which is 5, and in 312 the square root of 9, which is 3. These are the standard deviations, and therefore we see we got the right solutions. Let's go to question 3.2. We have a new combined random variable w, which is equal to 3x minus 2y plus 8. Now that 8 is really just a, an added constant. Right, so this is not a random variable, and therefore this constant will add to the expected value, but it, is, it isn't going to add to the variance. We will see that soon. So the expected value of w is 3 times the expected value of x minus 2 times the expected value of y plus 8, that constant. So we just need to plug in our values for expected value of x, which was 10, expected value of y, which was negative 1, and... Uh, do the calculations, and here we have so we have 30 plus 2 plus 8, that's 40. All right, so the expected value of w is 40. What about the variance of w? 3 squared times the variance of x plus negative 2 squared times the variance of y, and then we need the covariances covariance of x and y, so 2 times 3 times negative 2, so that's 2 times ab times the covariance of x and y, and now we're being given the information they're independent, so that's going to be zero again, that last bit. It's just going to be zero, so we get 9 times 9, which was the variance of x, plus 4 times 16, which was the variance of y, so here we get 145, and therefore the standard deviation is going to be square root of 145, which is 12.04 approximately, and that's the solution we are being given.